I'll show you what she does. Let's go. to this week's episode of the Mina I'm So podcast. I am here today joined by a very special person who has demonstrated that it's absolutely okay to move from a country thousands of kilometers away from New Zealand to, to begin a new life with her family. Her name is Fadia Thomas and she joins me today. Fadia, hello. Hello, Mina. How are you? I'm how are you? Good, good, very well. Thanks. So you are the epitome of a New, a New Zealand Iraqi immigrant who have been in the country for quite a long time now. How many years? Twenty-three years. Woo! We put on our mind. That's where we come to live, and we have to agree, and we have to make it as our home. And we start from scratch and like we didn't we didn't turn back and we say, oh, I have to do that. I have to do that. No, mm -hmm. like for me, I come here mm -hmm. and done. That's me. That's my country. I have to live with it. I have to love it mm -hmm. and good and bad things. Mm -hmm. And we survived. <laughs> have you so you obviously we're if people that cannot see us. This is uh, um, Fadia's floral shop. Uh, so you're a florist and you do weddings and you do corporate events and and obviously it hasn't always been this um, big, kind of gotten big over the years and you've yeah. done so much hard work yep. and I think every Iraqi every Iraqi person in the district knows about Fadia <laughs> and knows about your hard work and yes. about your uh, beautiful, be you know, beautifully uh, designed um, flowers. Um, so this is quite a significant for you. Like you are known as the flower lady who does every Iraqi wedding. <laughs> How many weddings have you done? Oh, I can't count. Like it's being almost start to do weddings 2002. Okay, so that's, that's 10, 20 years ago. 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you can't count. I've done mm -hmm. thousand Iraqis. It's like all the culture actually. Mm -hmm. Um, definitely I have a team with me. I started myself, like then it's like definitely I have a team. If I don't have a team, because always I follow my dream and my dream to be bigger and nicer, mm -hmm. you know? And when you want to do more things, you don't, you can't do it by yourself. Like I have a big team, beautiful team. Mm -hmm. They support me all the time. There is, um, um, we design, we do the the, the the wedding and and when we see it every time we do wedding and we feel like oh yeah sometimes it's tiring i said to myself especially on the last three years mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. i said what i'm doing mm -hmm. like is a is a lot of time on it it's like you don't see your house your children um your weekend yeah it's like of it's course. all gone but then if you don't love it it's hard to do it. So you love what you do? I love what you do. And you have passion? I do. If you don't have the passion for it, you can't do it. It's not like people, they see it like that and they think, oh, nice, I'm going to do it. If you don't have the passion, mm -hmm. um, 
you can't be keep going. Mm. So how did it start? Was it always that you were like into flower and arrangement and and design and creativity? Actually, in the rock? actually, there is something like I I like to be is like for me is more when I walk to the room and I like to change things. <laughs> it's like either on my house, like I remember when I I we married here yeah. with Ed and come here and every time he come back work from work he see my house different corner different decorations different yeah. like I moved the whole the furniture and everything yeah. either one time he said to me if your husband is blind he will be fall down all the time because you're changing the furniture <laughs> um, oh and that's where it's like yeah. I love that like I can change things and it's make me feel tired but it make me feel happy what is it about changing things that's really it's really it's make me feel is a challenge mm -hmm. like so you know it's like when you when you like you walk to the room and you see oh how are I gonna do it people they see it always like that how are I gonna make people impressed mm -hmm. and that's where is I love that mm -hmm. when people they walk in and they see a different mm -hmm. a different from the others it's a unique thing any memorable wedding that you made that you really absolutely really loved oh all of them <laughs> all of them is everyone have a person mm. who you like to talk with mm. um, all of them got different like if I start from long long time very simple mm. they are very simple mm. like you do something you do the flowers just pick and people they amazed now you do it this size and they still oh because okay. the wedding industry is a billion it's dollar getting... industry and, and people spend lots of money on weddings yeah. these days it's it's like I will say New Zealand is an average it's like, you know, if you go, if you compare ourselves with Australia's or somewhere else, like people, they love to spend because there is different multicultures. There is um, mm. Greek, there is Italians, Lebanese. Mm. Um, more people. More people. Yeah. Uh, multicultural. It's like mm. here you have to be cooperate between this very simple, mm. but the simple is not mean easy, it's harder mm. because the ice is getting really simple and you have to make it yeah. look wow. And also, people get paid more in Australia, don't they? Oh, no, <laughs> There's more money in Australia. No. no, I think people here they pay for it. Like they pay, they pay for it, but they want to see something different. Like, different. Yeah, yeah, different. So you have a you have a favorite project. Do you prefer? Um, so you obviously love being out and about with people, and you you have this personable um, character about you, obviously, <laughs> that has kept you going all these years. I yeah. mean, do you? Um, have you seen it um, grow beyond anything that you can imagine? Did, were you surprised that this has happened um, like so many years, like moving so many years, like since um, 2002? Did you expect it to be this big? Actually, I didn't think about it because like, um, how I, I didn't, I know it's going to be big when I start because I want it to be big because mm. It's like, I love it. Mm. Like for me, it's like, it's my playground. Like mm. I want, like sometimes I go and spend on things more when I spend on, like I forget when I spend on the flowers or decorations, yeah. all these mm. things. Mm. That's why it's like, I want it to be big. But mm. if I expect myself to be like that, I didn't see it until now I see myself, I'm a normal person. Like it's, I didn't done nothing. Mm. Like either until now it's like, I didn't see I'm a different from anyone. Because as a woman, obviously, in business, it is quite significant. It's, like, it's quite inspirational for women out there to yeah. be to look up to you and say, gosh, you know, Fadia has done such a great job, continue to do a great job. Um, I wonder how hard is it to, to do what she does in a different kind of industry? Like, what do you say to these people? Who... It's first, you choose the thing you love. Mm -hmm. You have to love it to do that. Secondly, if you want to do business, maybe I choose a career as a have a weekend and weekday work. Um, you're gonna have to choose between um, socials, families, and all that. Mm -hmm. Like I done it all. I I I I like to done it all. But for me, it's like mm -hmm. sometimes I look what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But if, if like you you don't see your kids all the time. Like I have two girls and you know about them. Like I didn't see them all the time. A lot of time days, I don't see them only one hour or something until you be mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe now it's because like it's getting, getting more, I have more stuff and more things. Yes, mm -hmm. 
but still like all the time you have to think for business mm. more than your house mm. you know I, I feel like all in New Zealand they said you have to feel of you you feel about your family first and then your work but with business I think you know business mm. always come first and then family and that's if you can do that mm. go for it do you think you've done a good job at that for me I don't know I don't know actually people they said that but until now I feel like uh, you know because we are Iraqi and we like to be cooking and do these things I didn't do much cooking and like I feel myself oh maybe I'm not a really good mom and maybe it's like I should do I should do that and I stay home with my girls doing the clothes my husband when he comes it's like you know it's 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 it's, it's a different is a different like especially when you have family when you have social life and you know is you love that mm. it's hard to get everything you can't get everything on a silver no, platter you can't um, and I'm really tempted to say a, a term in Arabic and people who are listening who speak Arabic will understand it's called har um gesib no, or khis. Khis. Yeah. Yeah. Would you be able to translate what I just said to people? Um, in English. <laughs> yeah. Like a lot of people, like what Mina saying, there is a lot of people. They coming. They want. Um, mm. It's like beautiful, <laughs> big, and cheap. <laughs> is this what people come to you for their wedding? I'm not gonna say. <laughs> I mean, it's the reality. People come to you and they've got a budget and they yeah. say, oh, how much look, can we spend? Look, I love to work with people budget. Yeah. It's, doesn't, it's, 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 it's a nothing. Challenge. It's a challenge. Like mm-hmm. people, when they walk with the budget, it's mm-hmm. beautiful. I make it beautiful with them. We have mm-hmm. a lot of things to do. But it's the, it's the hard things when they have a budget, but they want to go for, that's when we say hot. They want to take <laughs> like something for, they say 300, but they want to pay 100. Okay. That's the hard thing. What's the most expensive wedding that you've made? I'm oh, very it's a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, there is a good one, yeah. Yeah. Um, but hard work to do. Yeah. Can you give us um, like an estimation as to how much people would spend on weddings these days? Um, I think the average now for if they want a really good wedding, like with 250 people and they want the look like how we want it to be look is about minimum 10 grand oh yeah um if you go for something over next, like next you level. next level you go more than 20 grand well that's i mean that's somehow i'm, I'm not feeling that it's a lot of money because maybe i'm giving lots of expectations but maybe for some people it is but um i'm gonna take you away from weddings now and take you back to to home life Back to the kids and Ayad, your husband. How was it nurturing your kids? I mean, what were some of the challenges that you faced living through New Zealand uh, that has really shaped who you are today, if you remember? Of course. Of course, we learn a lot. Yeah. It's a lot of learning curve. Yeah. Um, any, like, any, any, any experience that really resonated with you, a difficult time that kind of has come through and you thought, gosh, I mean, this is quite challenging, um, being in New Zealand and having this, like... It's, 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 it's only to working as a woman, as an Arabic woman, a full time, and you taking care of your Arabic house mm-hmm. with all the extinct family and all that, that mm-hmm. is a challenge mm-hmm. itself. It's a different. Um, it's a different from where we come. Like um, you have to be. It's like with our family, we're not only caring about my husband and my daughters. It's like you have to take care of your father, your your, your parents-in-laws, your brothers, your sister, sister, you know, and friends. And there is a lot of things of of it's happening. And you like to help. You know, either like when we have church things and community things and like you know we you like to help with all that but then you find yourself you want to do that and you do it you do that but you find yourself you changing for um a worse person because you can handle what you can handle thing in life that um really challenged you to the edge um when it came to living in new zealand or anything that sort of you thought, gosh, it's great to be living in New Zealand, 
that now I'm going through this or I'm going through that and just sort of being thankful for having moved to New Zealand to get such support. It's like always I'm really loving New Zealand, but the last two years with COVID mm-hmm. it's really hit us. It's really, um, when you see, if we compare us with the other world, it's like, is there really something is really play on our um emotionals like you you're working so hard and you see yourself you're going down and you have to be challenging yourself to be surviving and smiling and you pushing your your all your family your staff at the same time it's like that's where is i find on this time i can't be focused only on my ayad and rosie and christina and my staff mm. i can't be focusing on something else it's, it's like mm. It's too much is happening around. So it was tough. Very the last tough. Two years. Very tough. It's yeah. competition. It's a very hard competition. Mm-hmm. People, they are like you see, it's like we sitting, we, we stay at home about six weeks or eight weeks without work, and mm-hmm. you ha- you have to be giving your, um, mm-hmm. you have to take care of your staff, and you make sure you can't pay them to stay with you. Um, because that's mm. something I feel, me and Ayad, we feel is responsibility for us. Of course. Yeah. And that's where is that the challenge to survive, to be there and doing all that and keep going. And it's getting harder. Mm. And that's where it's like things change. A lot of things has changed. Can you tell us one or two things that have changed after COVID? That is um, really it's like up? before, it's like, let's say if it's wedding, people, they come to me either if they are put the order and then they go and I order the flowers. There is no problem. Now they have to pay the deposit because a lot of weddings, we got the flowers here and then the wedding is canceled and that's mm-hmm. a thousands of, of dollars gone. It's not it's going on the rubbish because we're dealing with something fresh. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, 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 it's a bit of challenging and that's what we learn. We have to do like, you know, to sign a contract with us. Um, mm-hmm. It's other things is like, I don't feel myself secured until I see the wedding day is done. Like some some people, three times to four times, they change their weddings. And I have to be changing all that and sit with them. That's all hours and all that. And it's a bit of challenging, but... It sounds like it's a lot of work, especially with COVID, especially with the uncertainty, not knowing if something is going to go through and obviously having to run a business, like you're saying. Yeah. But, you know, there are happy moments and there are sad moments. Um, it's the other challenge you find on the on the COVID, actually. When you, when I stay home, <laughs> after how many years we're working, 18 years, when I stay home with my family for the first lockdown, I loved it. And that's where I felt myself... What I'm doing? Why I'm working? It's like, like, like I, I know, like when I come here, like as a bride, I, he doesn't want me to work, and like because me, I'm like I like to do things. He doesn't say no to me, yeah. um, but like I feel like what have I done? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's why people they see me maybe a bit of success. I'm thankful. It's really nice, but sometimes I think. Mm, yeah. I should stay home. <laughs> so it would have been a, a blessing in disguise to some extent, having COVID hit you hard, but then having the time to spend with family, yeah. given that yeah. in the last and 18 always years. Always you have to see the positive. See, always there is, in, in, in our life, always there is negative and positive things. Mm-hmm. If you always see your positive and you don't work for the money, you work and then the monies will become. If you're going to work something like, like, Always I will put like, I'm, I'm not going to do that because mm. I'm going to lose the money. I'm not going to, like, I will be no success. Because mm. so, so people, they will come. They will know when they come. That's why it's like, always there is positive and negative. On COVID, make us learn how it's like, I can stay home. Like, sometimes, like, when I stay home, first when it's COVID hit, mm. I, think, I think myself I'm a visitor at house because I don't know where is the <laughs> ports. I don't know where is... <laughs> Where is the things? Because you know, it's like I'm, I'm thinking. I said, "Oh, I'm a visitor here," you know, coming from overseas, and that's why I, I, I know my house now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, it's 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 so nice that you have chosen New Zealand to be your home. Um, uh, to wrap up um, things a little bit, is there something beautiful about New Zealand that you really love? Yeah. And um, what is it? I have to say, New Zealand people, they're really friendly. Mm-hmm. They really push you up. If you find you, either if it's like, mm-hmm. if you find you are a hard worker, you can do things, 
they will push you up. Mm-hmm. Um, they supportive. Mm-hmm. Um, if they they will they they will make you learn um, how you skill yourself better. Mm-hmm. You know that's why. Is they are for the kids. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's the best country. I think if you have a kids, if you're young, mm-hmm. you can go go somewhere else and work, and you have the experience. But when you have kids. You have to take care. It's a beautiful school, beautiful environment, all the friends, all the family, and I think that's the most important things we need so for our kids. Is it the values or yeah, the values for the them. values and the environment? The environment. And, yeah. um, it's like you don't have to go to put your children in private school to have a good school. It's all, all the um, the Catholic school and mm. all that. It's mm. all a very good school. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So finally, um, where in New Zealand? do you absolutely love and would visit over and over again? I will say Queenstown. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I love Queenstown. Yes. Um, yeah, I think Queenstown. Yes. Uh, briefly, it's why, why, why Queenstown? It's um, like when you go to Queenstown, you know it's a new, that's not in New Zealand, it's a different place. It's like you see all the people alive and like um, walking and all that. I love Waiheke too, but not like a Queenstown. Queenstown is... Okay, well that is going to be the end of our episode. Thank you so much, Fadia, oh, for coming welcome. on the show. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, it's so lovely to have you. And thank you for sharing your, your story with us and um, with our audience. And I appreciate you tuning in. Um, Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode. I hope that you come in. (laughs) Absolutely. And uh, hope to um, see you next week. Yeah. (laughs) Kia ora. Kia ora.